Over the last videos, we added loads of functionalities already to this application and it's really taking shape. Now, there's one thing missing. We created it at the beginning, but we never used it then, the sign up and sign in pages. Now, to continue with this project, we definitely need users and for that, we definitely need Firebase. So time to dive into Firebase now. For that, I'll visit firebase.google.com. This is simply where you can, well, create a new Firebase project and for that you'll need a Google account. So make sure to create one if you want to follow along actively and build your own project. Now I already do have one here, so I can now go to my console, to the Firebase console, where I can manage all my Firebase projects. Now I only have one project here, but I'm not going to use that one. Instead I'll create a new project here, add project. Now you can give it any name here and well feel free to choose what you want. I'll simply name it YouTube Dev Meetup and then you can choose a region and here I simply choose Germany because that's where I live. The, the region you would choose here does not decide and you can read that here. It does not determine where your data will be stored, right? So that is a different thing. So this is really just um, the region where you or your company sits. Well, with that set up, we can click create project to create this new Firebase project, which I want to use. And it'll take a couple of seconds. Once it's finished, it'll take you to the Firebase console, which is where you can manage the project. Now, this is no Firebase course, but I will quickly walk you through the features you see here before we then start implementing authentication. Firebase in general is a platform which offers you loads of features you typically need in backends for mobile apps or single page applications as we're building one here. So a single page web applications that would be. The features it offers you are a database, actually a real time database using web sockets so that if you update the database from let's say one user's device, you also see that update on other users devices, at least if that's an update interesting to these devices. And that is very convenient, obviously. So you got a database without you needing to configure anything on the server. And that's generally the purpose of Firebase. You get a backend which is very easy to use, where you can focus on your core business logic and where you don't have to write all the code you typically have to write when setting up your own server site. You don't have to configure your database. You don't have to write the code for accessing it. You don't have to care about security here. That's all managed for you. Of course, at the price of giving up some freedom regarding configuration. You can't configure everything here. It is configured and created for you, but you got a lot of features to work with. And that's why services like Firebase are a nice choice as a backend for projects if you want to focus on the front end. Now, another nice thing is that you don't have to worry about server capacities here. It just runs. And if you check out the pricing, the features we're going to use here are available for free, as you can see here at the bottom. But if you click on upgrade, you see there are a couple of um, uh, models available. Now we're in the Spark model and the Spark plan, that's the free one. And you can see the full plan details to see the quotas you actually have. They are sufficient for our project here, but for a production project, you probably don't want to use that because, for example, you can only have 100 connections to your database at a time and that might quickly be exceeded. So in such cases, you might either choose the flame plan, which costs $25 per month, where you have way more capacities, or the blaze plan, where you only pay what you need. So if you got no traffic at all, you're paying very little to nothing, but it scales up infinitely. That is again that nice thing, which was also true for AWS Lambda and so on, that you only pay for what you need, at least in the place plan here. And that is another advantage of Firebase. You not only don't have to write any server-side code, you also don't have to manage your servers. Another advantage. So which other features besides the database do we have? We got authentication. It's very easy to add user authentication to your app, be that through a social provider like Facebook or Google or your own authentication here with password and email. You got storage for storing files and we will use that for storing the images users upload in this application. Hosting to host your application. We'll also use that in the end to ship our application once we're done. Cloud functions allows you to run any code whenever a certain event triggers, like for example when a file was uploaded. This is great for example for creating thumbnails 
of images which were uploaded automatically. And that's not something I'm going to cover in this series, but likely something I'll cover in a future standalone video. And then you get a couple of other services for testing your application on different mobile devices, um, getting crash reporting on mobile devices, testing your performance, in general using analytics to see how users interact with your application, sending push notifications, especially interesting for mobile apps of course, or progressive web apps, and yeah, a couple of other stuff. We will focus on authentication, the database and storage and uh, hosting in this series, which are the core features from a business logic perspective, I'd say. And with that enough talking about Firebase, let's set up authentication. Now, I will do this in the next video.